In this video, I'm going to make some measurements using the oscilloscope in the 2031 lamp. I'll measure the period and frequency, duty cycle, rise time, and fall time of a signal, and then the propagation delay through a gate. For the single signal measurements, I'll be measuring the TTL clock signal from the cadet, so let me go ahead and hook that up. The TTL clock comes out of the left two columns of this connection block here, and there's a convenient ground at the bottom of the cadet here. The oscilloscope probe's ground clip always needs to be connected to a ground, and this retractable hook is where the signal is measured. You always want to make sure that the clock signal is set to a square wave at unity gain, and for these measurements I'm going to increase the frequency as far as the cadet can go. The oscilloscope is currently in its default state, which is entered with this button here. You can always enter the default state at any time, which can be useful if you change some settings and you're not sure how to change them back. The Auto Setup button found here will let the oscilloscope try to pick sensible scaling options. You're welcome to use it, but I'm going to start from the default setup so that you can see how you can acquire a waveform manually. The vertical scale is shown in the channel information here, and it defaults to 500 millivolts per division. That's too small for this signal, because you can see that it goes off the screen. So I'm going to use the vertical scale knob found here to increase the scale until I can see the entire waveform. Now that I can see my signal, I'm going to use the vertical position knob to move the signal down a little bit because there's a lot of wasted space on the bottom of the screen right now. It doesn't matter exactly where you put it, but I like to line it up on a division marker because that helps with some estimations. It looks like I can probably scale this vertically back up a bit, so let me try it out. And since it does fit on the screen, I'll leave it at this scale because this fills the screen nicely. Now that I can see the entire voltage range of the waveform, I need to adjust the trigger level. The trigger level on these oscilloscopes defaults to ground, as shown by this arrow on the right side of the screen. That's never going to make sense for signals in 2031 because all of our signals are above ground. I need to move the trigger level up a bit into the middle of the waveform. The trigger level is adjusted with this knob here, and you can see that as soon as I move it up into the waveform, the oscilloscope starts triggering on the rising edge. The first thing I'm going to measure is the period, and since we can't even see one period here, I need to use the horizontal scale knob to zoom out until I can see at least one period. Here we can see several periods. You should usually try to fill the screen with whatever waveform feature you're trying to measure. Since I'm trying to measure one period, I should zoom in on this one period to fill the screen a little bit more at least. This seems to fit nicely on the screen. If it didn't fit, I could take a measurement at this resolution. That would be fine. But since it does fit on the screen at this scale, I'm going to leave it here. At this point, we could estimate the period of the waveform using the divisions on the screen. The bottom right of the screen shows that I'm currently displaying at 1 microsecond per division. Since the period on the screen takes up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a half divisions, the period of this waveform is approximately 8.5 microseconds. We can measure that much more accurately though using cursors. The cursors are controlled using the button and knob in the cursors area in the bottom left of the controls. If no cursors are currently being shown, pressing the type button will turn them on. The first type of cursors that show up are vertical cursors. Pressing the type button again will turn on vertical and horizontal, and pressing it one more time will turn on horizontal. Pressing it again will turn them off. What we need for measuring the period are vertical cursors. When cursors are enabled, this knob here will adjust the active cursor left, right, up, or down. The active cursor is displayed a bit more vividly and is currently the one on the left here. To start measuring the period, I need to move one of these cursors over to one edge of the waveform. Notice that I did not choose the peak of this overshoot, and I did not choose the peak of this undershoot. The reason is because it's difficult to tell exactly where the peak of a waveform is because the voltage is changing so slowly there. By measuring from an edge, you can always be sure to get that exact same place on the next period of the waveform. To select the other cursor, you press on the cursor knob. You can see here that the other cursor has become a bit more vivid. I can now use the cursor knob to move the other cursor to the same feature on the second period of the waveform. You have to be a little bit careful with the cursors near the edge of the screen because they tend to snap, but by moving the knob very slowly, you can get it to the exact place that you need it. 
These oscilloscopes display vertical cursor information in the bottom right of the screen here. It displays absolute position of the cursors, but what we're really interested in is the difference between them, which is labeled as delta x. The value displayed here is 8.62 microseconds, which fits nicely with the 8.5 microseconds that we estimated from before. These oscilloscopes also display 1 over delta x, which in this case would be the frequency. Here the frequency is displayed as 116 kilohertz, which makes sense because the cadet's estimated maximum frequency is 100 kilohertz. The next thing we'll measure is the duty cycle. This is supposed to be a 50% duty cycle clock, but if you look closely you can see that it's high for a little bit longer than it is low. We need to measure that to see exactly what the duty cycle of this signal is. Calculating the positive duty cycle requires the period, which we already have, as well as the high time of the signal. The high time of the signal is measured from the 50% voltage point, but in order to find the 50% voltage point, we first have to find the 0% and the 100%. For this, I'm going to need horizontal cursors, so I enable cursors, but I keep pressing the cursor type button until I get horizontal cursors. Now I can use one cursor to move down into the steady state low of this waveform. Note that I found the steady state low of the signal where it's completely flat. I want to ignore any instances of undershoot like here and here. Horizontal cursor information is shown for each channel in the bottom left of the oscilloscope screen here. This is telling me that the steady state low of this signal is 200 millivolts. Selecting the other cursor is once again done by pushing on the cursor select knob, so I push on it until I've selected the other cursor. I can now move that cursor down into the steady state high of this waveform where it's completely flat, again ignoring any instances of overshoot like here and here. According to the horizontal cursor information, this signal has a steady state high of 4.44 volts. As you can see, the steady state low and high of this signal are not 0 volts and 5 volts. That's why you always have to measure them and not just assume that they're ground in VCC. Now that I know the 0% and 100% of this signal, I can calculate the 50%. I first need the difference between high and low, which is 4.44 volts minus 200 millivolts, or 4.24 volts. Half of 4.24 volts is 2.12 volts, but we have to put that 2.12 volts on top of the 0% voltage of 200 millivolts. That gives us a 50% voltage point of 2.32 volts. I'm going to use one of the horizontal cursors to keep track of that 50% voltage of 2.32 volts. I carefully adjust it until I see the cursor information read as close as possible to 2.32 volts. Now that I have the 50% voltage marked, I can take a closer look at the high time of this waveform. I can zoom in horizontally as we've seen before, but I'm also going to need to shift this waveform to the left. Horizontal position is adjusted with the horizontal position knob, like this. So let me go ahead and move this to the left of the screen. At this point, I can try zooming in horizontally again to see if it fits on the screen. It doesn't, but if I scroll to the left a little bit more, I can see that the high time does in fact fit on the screen, so I can leave it at this scale. If it didn't fit, I could take it at this scale but since it does, I'll use the maximum amount of screen that I can. I now need to measure the time of this high time, and that's done using vertical cursors, so I need to enable both horizontal and vertical cursors. The horizontal cursor that I placed at 50% is still here, so now I can use the vertical cursors to measure the time. Using one of the vertical cursors, I can move it over to where the waveform crosses the 50% point marked by my horizontal cursor. Pressing the cursor knob to select the other vertical cursor, I can now move that one to where the waveform once again crosses the 50% threshold. Vertical cursor information is still shown here in the bottom right of the screen, and the delta measured here is 4.62 microseconds. To calculate the positive duty cycle, we divide the 4.62 microseconds high time by the 8.62 microseconds period. That gives us a unitless decimal of 0 0.5359, which would more commonly be expressed as 53.6% positive duty cycle.
The last parameters that we need to measure on a single signal are the rise and fall times. These are measured from the 10% and 90% voltages, so we need the 0% and 100% again. Although we've already measured them for this signal and don't need to do it again, it's worth repeating that you cannot just assume that there's zero volts in VCC. Our signal had a steady state low of 200 millivolts and a steady state high of 4.44 volts. Using interpolation, we can find the 10% and 90% voltages of 624 millivolts and 4.016 volts. We can now use the same method of using the horizontal cursors to mark the voltages that we need. I'll move one cursor up to as close as I can get to our 10% voltage of 624 millivolts. Remember that horizontal cursor information is shown in the bottom left of the screen. Now to mark the 90% voltage, I push the cursor select knob to get my other cursor and move it down to as close as I can get to the 90% voltage of 4.016 volts. I'm not going to be able to get that exact value, so I should just get as close as I can. Now I can use the horizontal scale knob to zoom in on the feature that I'm interested in, which in this case is the rising edge. I'm going to need to scroll the waveform to the left, which again is done using the horizontal position knob. It's worth pointing out that this signal has a very strange rising edge, and in some cases might be considered defective. However, this is what you're likely to see coming out of the cadets, so if we had to measure this rise time, we would simply apply the rules and measure it as it is. At this point, I once again need to enable both vertical and horizontal cursors by pressing the cursor button. Same as before, I now need to move the vertical cursors to the place where the waveform crosses the places that I marked using the horizontal cursors. I push to select the other cursor and move that one over to the 10% point. The time between these cursors is the rise time, and it's shown here as 147.4 nanoseconds. Once the setup has been done for the rise time, measuring the fall time is actually extremely easy. All we need to do is enter the trigger settings menu and change the trigger edge from a rising edge to a falling edge. The oscilloscope is now triggering on the falling edge, but the 10% and 90% voltages are already marked from when we measured the rising edge. For this signal, we need to zoom in a little bit, since the falling edge is shorter than the rising edge. And after zooming in, we need to scroll a bit to the right to get the entire part of the waveform that we need on the screen. Now I just need to adjust my vertical cursors to the place where the waveform crosses the 90% and 10% voltages. And I've already measured the fall time of the signal, which turns out to be 10.66 nanoseconds. In the interest of time, I'm not going to explicitly show all the steps of measuring the propagation delay, because it's just an application of everything that we've done so far. You use the horizontal cursors to measure voltages, which for LS chips would be 50%, and for HCT chips would be 1.3 volts. Zoom in until the feature that you're interested in fills as much of the screen as possible, and then use the vertical cursors to measure the time from point to point. Here I measured the high to low propagation delay of one gate as 3.1 nanoseconds. I hope this video has helped you get over the learning curve of the oscilloscope. As always, ask me any questions and I'll see you in lab.